What is going on, YouTube? Savage here. In today's video, we'll be spectating a quads gameplay live here on Twitch. If you haven't followed me over on Twitch yet, make sure you do so. The link's in the description below. But before we get into the video, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel today. Also, leave a like on the video. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the gameplay. All right, here we are spectating a Null who is in a 1v... A 1v... 133 situation right now. Now, okay, as far as this team is concerned, once we grab this scav, if I was green, I would just hold my parachute. Hold your parachute in the air and just float. That way, whenever the scav pops up somewhere far away, your teammate can then let go of his parachute, drop in on the next scavenger, and hopefully y'all can rinse and repeat that with your other two teammates coming back from the gulag. Just a nice, simple strategy to give you guys a little bit of an edge to get your scavengers done as fast as humanly possible. Here we are now. Our, all of our teammates are back. We're getting the scavengers. They got pretty lucky. The next scav's right next to it. Let's see where it goes. Blue needs to keep his ass in the air. Blue needs to keep his zappy ass in the air so he can get the next one because it's probably going to be four feet away. Never mind. Wow. Whenever I get a scavenger objective, it literally goes, it literally will go from here to here to here. I mean, it's just, it's crazy distance, but these guys are getting blessed. This is apparently the best place to get scavengers. Jesus. Wow. <laughs> look, look at this. You have to walk four feet. What is this? Does this shit happen for y'all too? I feel like I feel like my scavengers don't ever do this. Do your scavengers do this? This is the place. Y'all ever see a scavenger in this area? Pick it the fuck up because it ain't gonna be hard for y'all to finish up at all. All right, we got our loadout. It's time to play. I don't know what we're doing right now. I don't know why we're like going around this place. Why we? Let's, let's get out of here. Let's go do something. Play aggressive. Play passive. Whatever you guys want to do, you need to come up with a plan of action for the match and go with it, dude. All right, here we have blue playing super aggressive. Let's go spectate this man. He is on top of it right now. Oh, wrong blue. You have in the air. Guy sitting on top of IHOP. Sniper on the right-hand side by the door. I don't think he spotted him at all. Team, enemy team coming up behind us. And unfortunately, now we're in a situation where we're separated. Light blue, the guy we're spectating now has to take on this duo, I think. We only know of two enemies. We know for sure there's two. There may be a full team here. But we're by ourselves regardless in an unfortunate out-positioned fight. Meanwhile, yellow and blue are fighting these guys. Again, don't contest sniper rifles with, with rifles like this, right? You don't want to use automatic rifles when contesting snipers because that glint can be scary. If you can hit a shot, so you're going to get on before you can hit them twice. And how this guy right here, how Jeffries is just hard peeking the window... Waiting for that perfect shot. I'm very surprised that Sniper didn't his head up. Very surprised. And like I thought, Light Blue going down, that was no surprise at all right there. Again, you're solo. Unfortunately for him, he had the right idea of pushing across and getting the fight done, but unfortunately, his team was lagging behind, and they just honestly got in a bad spot. Being pushed from behind, third-party situation, bad COD timing at the end of the day. But we do have $4,500. We can get our teammates back. We got a buy station right next to us. I would definitely go ahead and get somebody back. I would call back, call back light blue, get his happy ass back in here, and let's roll out. Hopefully get another teammate back too after that. Again, what we should have done the moment we were on the roof, jump off, go to the buy station, get our teammate back. Would it have been vulnerable? Yeah, but we knew damn well that the team that had just killed our guy was over here. That team that killed Blue was over here. If we would have jumped over here, they would have not had a line of sight on you. But because you waited so long and you went out the bottom door, you ended up getting killed. That team had the opportunity to push you because y'all were outnumbered and they knew you were outnumbered and you were in a bad position. You were in a camp up position. Of course, they were going to win. Oh, baby. What, what do you got the Diamantes for, fam? Close range, long range. Come on, baby. Rotate out of here. Play the build to your advantage. They know where you're at. They know where you're at, dude. I think. He's got, what are you doing? Or another plastic right here, boys. It's a 2v1 right now. I'm very surprised these guys aren't throwing stuns inside of here. I'm very surprised we're not stunning the enemy. Now we're turning our back completely to the enemy. Turn your back and run away, but you still want to turn around and shoot at them because you know damn well they're going to see you running away. Oh my god, don't ever do that. Weird! Man, buy your teammates back! Buying your teammate back is priority if you can do so safely. And he could have done it safely. Again, 
because he wastes because he wasted so much time and he waited so long he gave the enemy ample amount of opportunity to come in get close to him and get the kills and, and again guys this is why this is why i make the series we all put ourselves in positions to get on we do it to ourselves most of the time when we get third party most of the time it's our own fault pick up the ffar or you can keep the m16 that's fine too whatever guys choose the right weapon for the right fight small caliber rounds here he's got a car 98 and he's got the m16 i would rather that far for sure for Wait, sure we got an enemy on mini map right in front of us bunny hopping around the corner like this fortnite lo and behold he f***ing dies who would have thought that was going to happen? Granted, he's probably going to the buy station. He probably didn't know we were over here. But instead of just be hopping and just putting your body in the air and flailing your arms around like you just don't care, at least peek the corner and look around the corner before you just jump out there and die. That's pretty self-explanatory. A lot of times I say this stuff and, and people are like, Savage! Savage, we know this already, duh! You're not giving me any tangible information. Well, I mean, the moment that I stop giving you this information is the moment I stop seeing people do this shit. That's when I'll stop saying the same thing over and over. Oh, here we are still. Motherfuckers. I don't know why it takes people this long to, to loot. I really don't. Like if you're on controller, I understand. Uh, he's on the rooftop fam. He, uh, that's not gonna help. Okay. Well, uh, I'll, I'll wait, I'll hold, my, I'll hold that thought. I don't understand why it takes people that long in their loadout. If you have to scroll all the way to the bottom to get your loadout, move that loadout to the top. That way you can hit the hit the crate and just go one two x right very easy very simple especially when your loadouts are vulnerable areas like rooftops wide open fields things like that or in a position if y'all watched my stream yesterday i was in a position where i was solo to squad that squad come, came back on their loadout drop they were able to grab their loadout and fight me efficiently um i still shit on their face but they grabbed their guns fast enough fast enough to actually make it a fair fight and that's the speed you guys need if you're in a situation where you got to land on your loadout and instantly start fighting. Don't ever take more than three Wait, seconds in your loadout. That's crazy. That's crazy, guys. <laughs> also, slide canceling. People think what he's doing is slide canceling. Slide canceling isn't just sliding and stopping at the end. That's not slide canceling. Slide canceling is stopping the slide, canceling it mid slide, right? Again, what that what the objective of slide canceling does is it resets your double time. And what double time does is it makes your movement speed faster, right? You put your gun up in the air and you start sprinting. Once your gun comes down, it means you're moving slower. Slide cancel resets your double time so you run faster throughout the map. That's the main purpose of it. If you allow the slide to be completed and you just get back up, you're not doing anything but slowing your own movement speed down. Yes, your slide, your uh, double time is resetting too, but then you're just sliding slowly and you're able to get headshotted very, very easily. All right, we're in a situation where we can still buy UAV. Between Camille's money and McCabe's money, we can easily get UAV, and I think that's what he's trying to do. That's why he's at the buy station, but unfortunately, McCabe is not taking that hint. Again, guys, join the Discord, please, so you guys can use comms or at least ping shit. Miscommunications like this could be drastic. We could have UAV in the air right now and know exactly where people are at, but unfortunately, because we're not doing that, we're kind of just scanning blindly. Two sniper glares. Now, let me ask you, chat, how does, how do they know we're over here? How did those two guys know that we're here? Is it hacks? What is it? I want to know what you guys think. How, how do these snipers just always know where we're at? Because we're literally living in our scope. What happens when you live in your sniper scope? You produce a glare that reveals your position to the entire map. Stop it. Scan for your enemies outside your scope. And when you see the enemy, then zoom in unless you know you're scanning a mountaintop there's a lot of trees and shit you need that zoom shit like this though there's no reason for it all you're doing is revealing your own position to the enemies that you're fighting and potentially other enemies that can third party you i got killed by a guy the other day is like how do you know where i was at he's hacking and i was just i literally said on stream i was like oh you're wearing bright ass blue camo same situation guys if you're wearing bright ass camo get it out of there make it hard for the enemies to spot you sniper scope glint remove that shit bright ass camos remove that shit stop being completely exposed on rooftops sitting on ledges and shit Make it hard for the enemy to kill you. Don't make their job easier. Now, Alexandre is a, a perfect example of players that doesn't really pay attention to what's going on. His team has rotated together over to train station. And here we are just kind of going out in the open. No slide canceling, just running on our business. No double time. Um, just running around. We got a kilo. Oh, a little bit of lag. These servers have been bad today. The servers have been really bad today. 
And also another problem, he has a Kilo and he has a Karn 8. I don't like that. If you get in a fight in a close range building, if you get in a fight in a building, close range combat, and you have a Kilo with a VLK on it, you're gonna fucking die. I don't care. I'm a savage, I'm really good with the Kilo. You're gonna fucking die. And Max 10 will fuck your face up if you have a Kilo and you're rounding a corner in a doorway. This is just crazy. Right guns for the right fights. Make sure if you're using a sniper, you have something that you can get in close range combat with. Now, if you plan on never going in buildings and just being a support player, which Alexandria may be doing, that's fine. But I don't think that's his, I don't think that's his intention. I'm gonna be honest, judging by the gameplay. I don't think that's his intention. Also, notice this, his crosshair. Not his crosshair, his reticle, the little dot. Notice how it's on the ground. Notice how his crosshair is on the ground, his reticle's on the ground. Why? When you're moving throughout the map, you need to take that little dot in the middle of your screen and move it on the ridges of the hill. That way, if someone peeks up, your dot's already there. You're ready to shoot at them. You're not just staring at the ground. It's easier to move your reticle from side to side to snap on enemies than it is to go up, right, down, and try to get all of these different bearings. Never run with your reticle at the ground. Whether you're scanning, whether you're just running from one place to another, it's crazy. Now, I can say I did this before, too. I did this for many, many years. This is something a lot of players do. You got to get out of the habit of. Make sure your reticle is always on the horizon and or scanning areas where you think enemies are at. If my eyes are looking at places, like if I'm pushing across and there's windows looking at me and I think there's enemies there, that's where my reticle is going to be at. My reticle is going to be scanning windows and rooftops and shit like that. That way, if someone does peek, I'm already ready for them. Cancel that. Now, again, I'm not hating on Alexandria. Again, this is this is another perfect example of players, different players playing differently. Let, let me teach you guys or explain shit to you guys off of a certain player's gameplay. Something you can't do spectating goats. We're gonna go someone else. He's lagging. <laughs> He's lagging bad. So here we have McCabe. Okay, okay. He ping. I thought he was about to shoot at him. I must say, please don't piss off another team while you're in the middle of combat on an open ass hill. Again, that team didn't see him. There's no reason to continuously look over there in our scope because again, that glares and give away our position. I'll keep my eye on there. I'll look over and be like, okay, we're good, but I'll never scope it on the area and allow that team to be like, oh shit, there's people over there. Because if they're not paying attention, they're not paying attention. Don't give them the ability to actually know where you're at. Now fights like this is crucial to get that knock. If these guys can knock one player, it's now down to a 4v3, not to mention one enemy will at least go to get the res and then it's a 4v2. That allows you guys to probably have the ability to push the enemy and get the kills. Now McCabe's coming over here by himself. He knows there's a team over here. He marked it. Shit like this too. Look, look at the mini map right now. Look at the map. Let me ask you guys, why are we over here and my team's still over here? Remember, move together, get out of bad position together. If y'all hang around that fight for too long, you're gonna end up getting on from that team you're fighting and or because you're in the open. Look at this. You have Bank, you have Bank that has an angle on you, you have IHOP that has an angle on you, you have Red Roof that has an angle on you, you have Blue Roof that has an angle on you, you have all of Downtown that has an angle on you. Get out of that position fast as The fact that we were already over here and our team was still sitting by the bridge, wasted time, too much time. This is again, reasons why I get third partied. EU server? Why would I be on an EU server? You might be right, but why? Okay, our... Weird! Why is our team... Oh, look, they all went down. They all fucking went down. In the open, no cover, not doing anything. They've got one ping. Why? 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 So, as far as that team, when they were over here, it was a bad call. They should be with us. But, you know, they're trying to move to the next zone, and that's fine. I'm good with that. But why not move through the buildings? Why not navigate the buildings and use cover? Why would you cross in the open when you have all this cover and concealment right here? Now, I'm very surprised they didn't get executed. All three of them went down, and somehow they survived. I'm moving. But man, they, again, they got lucky. We've been expecting a lot of teams lately just doing completely bad shit and somehow getting blessed by the COD gods, man. Completely blessed. Enemy movement. 
and slowly but surely our team over here gets picked off one at a time in different areas now i do think the enemy team had the right or i do i do think our teammates had the right idea by pushing trying to get in the center but they just did it wrong right they just did it wrong this is the area they should have been at they should have used these buildings to rotate in fight whoever's here clear our backside and then push into the next compound this is why i tell you guys never to camp or never go to the middle of the circle if you guys go to the middle of the circle you're gonna get third parties look at that guy hitting the prone mccabe was safe i do think he probably should have left that area sooner than he did but it ended up working out I like the fact that McCabe got out of dodge from the guys on the hill, rotated that circle, and I really wish this team would have been with him. And then we could have pushed from that building that we were just camping on over to here. And look where McCabe's at right now. Still playing good. Still in a good spot. Now I'll be surprised if nobody's on blue roof. I'll be very surprised if no one's in this building. Tagging aid station location. Tagging aid station location. We need hundred dollars. There you go. Drop it for your teammate. Hopefully he picks it up. It looks like he's going completely somewhere else. Uh 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 uh, uh. come back. Come back. Nope, going to load out. Communication error right there. I'm for him going for his loadout, 100%. But we should have discussed that. I'm for him going to load out. We got to go that, that area anyway. Not to mention, we could buy our two teammates back instead of one. So now we run a huge risk because there's two people down here by the buy station. We're on a huge risk of not being able to get our teammate back now. And then when our teammate comes back to us because of the open area, he gets off. So instead of having two teammates, now we now are back to, or instead of having three teammates, now we're back to one. Awesome. Can I get a hand clap in the chat? So Savage, if your teammates decide to push in the unsafe way and you know it's the wrong move, do you stay with them or do your own thing? Stay with them. Stay with them. So, I mean, situational based for the most time, stay with them. And that happened the other day. And I told them it was a northern circle. I said, hey, we need to focus on the hills because the hills is the next zone. And the buildings we're at right now is very, it's very small of the circle and it's going to get pushed out. There's three teams here. We need to get the fuck out of here. Hey, they wanted to play for kills and we ended up getting third partied. Um, but I went with them because you got to stay together. Last thing I'm going to do is solo a squad in the first place when you could possibly outplay a bad situation having your full squad there. Taking fire over here. And this is a perfect reason why I always say don't play the edge of the circle either. Because now this team's going to get on from the high ground. There's so many things I want to say, but I can't pause the video. Damn it. We're going to do a Discord video after this. We're going to do this Discord one. Oh, whoa, there are children watching. Relocating. Oh, he got the teammate too. Oh. Actually, I killed us and the teammate. Lit. Lit. If you're not confident, your skill stay with the team for sure. For sure. Ooh, he almost outplayed that. Good shit, Golden. Good try, brother. All right, as far as this team's concerned, again, bro, depending on who's in the lobby, there's no way we should be allowed to go up this hill at all. If I was on this, if I was at this compound, I'd be looking down this hill, ready to on this team. I don't know if, I don't think there's a way up on the right-hand side. There might be. Oh shit, there is, Never mind. That's a good read, actually. This is the better play, for sure. Get to the high ground as fast as possible. I didn't realize the trail was here. I like the fact that instead of going into the compound, they know the compound's getting pushed out and they're gonna sit here and wait for the people to fight. Um, and then third party them as they're leaving the zone. But we need to go ahead and get an angle on the edge of the circle. We need to get an angle right here because once they leave the tents, they're gonna be vulnerable. But because we're hiding behind a rock, we're gonna miss out on opportunities to get nice, easy kills. Look at his teammate laying down on the ground like a frog. They had a good plan, but they executed poorly, man. This is terrible. Why? Y'all could easily have killed the guys coming out of the tents. It still may work out. We got nice circle favor, but I don't like this at all. We get third party the fuck out of these guys, rack up some kills. The Flores is sitting on 10 kills right now. Um, our homeboy's sitting on five. Moving. It may work out again because we have circle favor. We got to watch out. We're vulnerable to that window and to the doorway that's shed behind it. Oh, here we go with the bush. There we go. If it, only he had a heartbeat. Weird. A savage. Lane in bushes is awesome. <sighs> so if we would have pushed the teams and gate kept them out of tents guess what wouldn't have happened they wouldn't have just killed us and won the game 
Weird. GG's. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, again, don't forget to follow me on Twitch, subscribe to me on YouTube, and leave a like on the video. But until next time, you have a good one, and good luck in Warzone.